really advisable when we talk to the patient uh, to, before treatment to find out what is really important for the patient. And uh, this discussion has to be done before treatment, not after treatment. Some doctors fail to do this and then they get into troubles because uh, for, uh, interestingly for some patients aesthetics completely differs for, from what we are understanding about aesthetics. So this uh, has to be found out uh, in the beginning. Uh, again, this is uh, from the from the literature. Uh, multiple multiple tooth replacement uh, the aesthetic results. So, what is uh, what is what is interesting? The replacement uh, of multiple adjacent missing teeth in the anterior maxilla with fixed implant restorations is poorly documented. This is this is true. In this context, aesthetic restoration is not predictable, particularly regarding the contours of the interimplant soft tissue. This is also true. So currently, the literature regarding aesthetic outcomes is inconclusive for the routine implementation of certain surgical approaches. So, uh, and uh, as, a, as a conclusion, uh, of course, we don't have to, means the patient don't, don't have to be involved in this, like this, this is not like experimental, but uh, myself personally, when I'm treating the patient, I'm trying to, not, not only trying, but uh, uh, I'm doing a, a metal to ceramic restoration as a first restoration, and I'm trying not to change it. Means I'm trying to do some uh, uh, surgical uh, approaches um, in order to avoid uh, as much as possible gum shrinkage and to, to keep this restoration for a long time. Means uh, four, five, six, seven years. But anyway, patients should know that uh, this is, uh, we cannot achieve this in 100%. So if anything uh, happens, if anything wrong happens, like uh, implant gets uh, visible or there is some gap, so uh, that we have to change this restoration. Okay, uh, we have, of course, we have two, two approaches, transgingival and transalveolar approach. This is the, the means that's the... The, we are not uh, reflecting flaps, as you know, so these are two approaches to get uh, our implants into the bone. In healed bones, there is, of course, there is no resorption, so achieving uh, acceptable patient satisfaction is not so hard. In extraction sockets, uh, because of uh, physiologically, physiological bone resorption after extraction, uh, sometimes uh, it is uh, not so easy to achieve good results from the beginning. Okay, this is how it looks uh, in healed bone. We can use pink ceramic, we cannot use pink ceramic. It means this is depending on the patient. Anyway, uh, here this is healed, so we don't expect any further uh, changes. So aesthetics more or less is predictable. It means results are predictable. Okay, uh, this is again from the literature. Uh, you know all what means type one placement, type Type 1 placement means immediate extraction, immediate uh, loading procedure. Uh, the difficulty is uh, type 1 placement in uh, anterior maxilla is the buccal bone. It is also called bundle bone. It has poor blood supply. It is uh, thin. Sometimes it's missing. And this bone is, just, is there just because of the teeth. So when we, take our, uh, when we take the front teeth out, then we should expect that this bone will get lost. And then by this in mind, uh, we will be we can try to modify our approaches in order to compensate for this bone loss. Of course, uh, the, the aesthetics, uh, um, not the aesthetics, but the um, the shrinkage, the resorption depends on the gingival biotype. We have thin, thick uh, uh, gingival biotype in, in thick, in thin gingival biotype, of course, we, we should expect more resorption. So the approach could be a little bit more, a little bit uh, different. Uh, again, theory. So minimum of two millimeters buccal bone thickness for maintenance of vertical dimension of alveolar crest. This is uh, again from the literature. So we have to have at least minimum two millimeters of buccal bone thickness. But unfortunately, depending on the study, the buccal bone uh, thickness is more than two millimeters between zero and, and 4%. So by default, we should expect that anyway, this